I wanted to have some precise bench docks to use on my CNC router for precise workpiece positioning. And in this video, I'm going to show you how I made them myself. I started with a few test holes and also 3D printed some test docks just to get a better feel of the actual size. And this is a size that you can also buy, which fits a 20 millimeter hole and has a 25 millimeter diameter. And that just seemed a little too big for my application. So I also made some dogs that fit a 15 millimeter hole and have a 19 millimeter diameter. And yeah, I like this size a lot better. So that's the size I'm going with. In another video, I mentioned I could use this old weightlifting bar for the material. But since I now changed the size to some smaller diameter, I can now use 20 millimeter round stock of aluminum. But to chuck that safely in the lathe without it sticking out the back too much, I first have to cut it in half. Oh, come on, you didn't really think that I'm using the hacksaw for this. This battery powered metal cutting bandsaw also has to be one of the best gifts I got so far through my Amazon wishlist. Dwayne sent me this quite a while ago and if you're watching this, this is so nice. Thanks man. Now at the lathe, I let this stick out about this much. And to support that end and really prevent it from oscillating, we made these 3D printed sleeves that fit around the raw material all the way into the spindle. And the end part here is a bit conical, so it kind of clamps on the spindle and now it's really supported on the end. After facing, I now at first try to turn to a perfect 90 millimeter diameter. I first stretch the material surface and set the dial to zero at that position and then I can start with turning away half a millimeter. First pass is done and I am at 19.53. That was my setting and in theory my goal would be here. But I will make this in two more passes to just check the consistency of the measurements. And I also switched the feet to get a better surface finish. And I also got a single shaving. Great, I actually don't really want that. <laughs> Let's measure that. 19.28, 19.27 here. Yeah, besides the measuring, how do you like the side of my head? Well, at least the machine is accurate. Okay, now for the final setting, this is another 0.25, but to set 0.28, I go kind of between these two lines. Between these two lines, it's 0.05. Now I've got 19.01, 19.00, I am happy enough with that. And now I will make this setting my new zero. So now for the next part, when I set this to zero, I should get 19.00 millimeters, in theory. Now I'm going to turn the first 15 millimeters to 15 millimeters diameter. I forgot to press record for one part. When I should have been at 16 millimeters, I also measured 16.01 and now I should be at 15 and I am at 15.04. 15.02, 15.03, The diameter I'm actually shooting for is 14.9 because if it's 15.0 and the hole is 15.0, there is no way you can get that in by hand. So there needs to be a tiny gap that you are able to press it in by hand, but also can remove it quite easily 
and there is still a lot of accuracy left. And the measurement of 14.9, I basically got from the commercial ones. They also then make them to 20 millimeters, but rather to 19.9 for the exact same reason. And I also made a test print that I turned to exactly 14.9 and made this hole with the CNC router to 15.0 in theory. And it fits really snugly and I can just get it out by hand. And if that's still too tight, then I will adjust the hole size with the router and I will leave this diameter at 14.9. So now I'm going to set another tenth and make the final pass. Fourteen point nine one. I guess I'll go with that. When I had first faced this part, I had this dial here set to zero, and now I set it to fifteen millimeters, and then I will face this shoulder and also create a relief cut. You have to do that because the tool has a small radius on its tip and without doing that, that would prevent the dog from sitting flush on a surface. But now that it's done, it can sit flush again. Now that the overall dimensions are correct, I switch the tool for a chamfering tool. And I don't really care about the size of the chamfer because it doesn't really matter, so I'll just eyeball that. But I wrote down the numbers of the dials at my full depth of the chamfer so that I can at least make on every dog the same size chamfer. And the last step is to part it off. To make the parting go better I only plunged a few millimeters, then I moved one millimeter to the left and plunged again and so on. I do that to prevent the tool from getting jammed. That already happened in the past and caused two inserts and one tool holder. Going back and forth worked fine. Okay, and now I break it off. This test hole is drilled with a 15 mm Forstner bit and right here the fit for the purpose of this dock is just perfect. And it even plops. Okay, for the next one I set this dial to half a millimeter before zero. Now I can bring the stock up to the cutter tighten it down and start with facing it off at now zero and then the rest is the same as before. On the first one I forgot to add some gripping grooves and I will make them now on the second one. Okay, I was able to make two identical ones with a size difference of about one one hundredth of a millimeter, which I'm pretty satisfied with. And of course it also fits well and the gripping grooves actually help. And here again a high speed run. One part took me roughly 12 minutes, but I also got faster after a few. Okay, I've got six of them made and also was able to recut the grooves for the first one and I also made three taller ones and I've got all of them within a tolerance of one one hundredth of a millimeter which I'm quite satisfied with. Now I just need to clean off this face here and cut them to final length. I'm shooting for a length of the top part of 12 millimeters and I'm now going to calibrate the setting with the first piece, write down the numbers of the dials and then I can make all of them the same length. So I measured 13.26 and I now set this dial that now when I turn it to zero 
In theory, I would end up with 12.0 on the part. But I'll again make this in two passes. And after this pass, I will see if there are exactly four tenths left. 12.27. Huh, there are three tenths left. So I somehow screwed up one tenth when setting this up. But no problem. I just now set 0.27 with this dial, then zero it, and then it's done. 12.02, well, that is good enough. It's not really important that this measurement is absolutely perfect. And finally, in the chamfer on the top. And now, it's finished. Right after that I figured I could also face the parts and turn them to length with the chamfering tool, so I wouldn't have to change the tool. Much quicker as you can see. And after that I also made some more dogs out of polyoxymethylene or short POM. Turning this stuff is just a breeze. And parting is no problem whatsoever. I then also turned to plastic ones to find length and made the final chamfer. And with that, they are all done and I'm very satisfied with how they turned out. Next then is the whole grid in the waste board and I made a separate video about that that you can watch right here. So I'll see you there and there I explain how I use the dogs and how I made the whole grid. And the measurement of 14.9 I basically got from the commercial ones. They also don't make them, uh, they also don't make them to 20 mm. And it even plops. It plops. It plops. Kind of. Let's try this one. A little bit.